George Soros organized against President Donald Trump by financing a protest group called Move On, along with working with Hillary Clinton when she lost the presidential election. They disputed the election results, feeling like something should be done differently. Guess what? Focusing on Saul Alinsky tactics. Take a look. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. We're going to talk about George Soros today. George Soros, we've talked about him before, but understand that this is how close that Hillary Clinton and George Soros are. Her daughter got married at George Soros's daughter's house. He was investing in being a part of her campaign, which just recently just lost. They're gathering as we speak in Washington, D.C. after the election, these organizations that George Soros funds to be able to organize anti-Trump anti protest. As a matter of fact, let's take a look because understand that God said these things were gonna be happening. Now we're seeing it take place. A lot of people think it's over. We had Chuck Pierce on just the other day and he was prophesying that everybody's gonna say peace, 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 but it's not gonna be any peace. There's gonna be this, this, this shaking going on and immediately, before the 70-day transition period of the president-elect Donald Trump is up, before the inauguration takes place January 20th, they're already organizing against our president, which a president-elect that America just elected uh, a sweeping election across the United States. Let's take a look. Across the U.S. and police are gearing up for more. Crowds have been marching through Philadelphia, Washington D.C., New York, and Chicago, among many others. The protests uh, mainly are proving to be peaceful thus far, but keeping an eye on it, police have had to move into uh, some of them, which have threatened to turn rowdy. One of the groups organizing anti-Trump rallies is called Move On. It's calling for action and demonstrations against the president-elect nationwide. However, Move On apparently has ties to billionaire investor George Soros. Ah, there's a name to conjure with. That information uh, came to light from the emails leaked by WikiLeaks from Hillary Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta. In the leaked emails, Soros uh, is told about activists who need funding with the Move On group highlighted. Interesting turn of events. Let's talk uh, live to Marco Gasic, international affairs commentator. Mark, what, what, what's the fuss about here? Uh, the, Trump, whether you like him or not, was elected fairly and squarely by the looks of it. Nobody's saying the votes were rigged. Nobody's saying there's anything underhand here. Don't people just simply have to accept that that's the way it is? Democracy played out. The majority of the people wanted it. Well, thereabouts. There he is. Yeah, uh, well, I would certainly agree, Kevin. Uh, in essence, what uh, the opponents of Trump now are doing is exactly what they accused him of bit planning to do if he lost, which is uh, disputing the results of an entirely fair uh, election. It's an election where they've had all the media power and more of the money and yet they've lost to him and to the voice of those ordinary people uh, in the American shires who are normally ignored and forgotten. So they've spoken up uh, as, in, uh, as in the UK uh, earlier. So it's a kind of a, 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 a it's a, almost a, a tussle now between uh, the Clinton Soros uh, view which is that the only uh, democracy that's allowed is a one party democracy that agrees with what you say and uh, or rather with what they say. And if that uh, doesn't happen, then they're ready to do a colour revolution to uh, destroy that democracy well, you, and that democratic vote. I was going to say... And they, they've uh, done it abroad, now they're doing it at home. Are these genuine protesters, or going on from what I was saying just now, you know, given these uh, latest WikiLeaks revelations about um, uh, funding activists, could, it, could they be activists that are funded, stirring it up, not genuinely uh, people that are genuinely aggrieved with the, with, with the democratic process? Well, I think it's uh, the, those who are stirring it up, and they do, uh, many of them work for George Soros' uh, front organizations, are really, uh, being, uh, are really telling those innocent protesters and, and perhaps less innocent protesters that they're in danger, that they're endangered by Trump, even though Trump has done nothing but preach unity since he actually won uh, the election. So it's clear that what they object to in Trump, that's to say what the uh, globalist elite object to in Trump, is perhaps something else other than the things they're telling the protesters about. And I think what they really want, I don't think they really imagine they're going to get rid of Trump, but what they want to do is to intimidate him into agreeing to, uh, to settle for social peace at home as long as the mm. global globalist elites are allowed to pursue their continuing wars abroad. And so really it's a trade-off where, in effect, they want him to throw in the towel and become a neocon just like they are. We're showing our viewers, um, one of the protesters in the streets, they're saying that, that uh, 
Trump should be assassinated. OK, maybe she made that off the cuff, maybe whatever. But is it going to turn that way? Is it going to get more and more violent or is this all, all going to die down? That, I think, is the uh, $64,000 question, but effectively, uh, that sense of inevitability of the kind of Western liberal globalist movement has been uh, brought short by the return of a traditionalist kind of old white male, and it's something that they find intolerable. But as I say, if uh, this, and as you say indeed, the election was fought in a fair way, a relatively fair way, slightly to the detriment of Donald Trump, who didn't make things easier for himself with some of his sound bites. Mm. But now that the election has been fought, and won by him, they should put up or shut up. Well, now California is saying they would like to reject these results. They say it's not consistent with the state's values. Uh, I mean, on, the, on the, the legal side of it, how can they say that? He won this election fair and square by the rules. What are they talking about there? I think we're talking about someone stirring the pot there because America has never had traditionally had a problem with accepting the results of elections. We now have, uh, as I say, Soros behind uh, many pr uh, color revolutions in other countries are now financing, in effect, a kind of semi-color revolution in the U.S. I don't know whether it categorizes as treason, but he certainly operates from the shadows, in the shadows. His only legitimacy is his wallet and his only uh, concern is to create the kind of democracy that he can prop up uh, and gain an interest from. So that's the kind of person who's behind this uh, continuing protest against what, at the end of the day, was a valid, legitimate, free mm. and fair election. Obama's not said too much about this trouble that's brewing at the moment. Uh, do you think he will step in? I mean, what can he say? Maybe he's trying to stay out of it so it doesn't get stoked up any further. What, what response, if any, are we expecting from him soon? Well, I think that President Obama has the power immorally, in a sense, through his popularity to actually considerably stop and dampen down these tensions. But I think he's quite um, pleased in the short term that they're happening and then he will finally turn up and in a slightly moderate voice ask for some, uh, 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 some more calmness. But actually he should really be uh, much quicker about his reaction because it is the fundamentals of American democracy that are being uh, threatened here. If uh, little uh, groups disagree with, uh, with an election, the idea that they can then demonstrate their way uh, into political power is in effect trying to turn the US into the banana republic that so many other uh, states have had happened to them as a result of the efforts of uh, previous American administrations. Some might say it's the, uh, the, the source for what's source for the goose is source. Well, there's a phrase about it anyway. Yeah, the point one. is, uh, poetic justice, I think, is the, uh, <laughs> is the, uh, the, uh, the essence of it. Marco Gasic, international affairs commentator, thanks for your time today. Have a good evening. This is so important. We're going to be talking about today organizing darkness, organizers of the day versus organizers of the night, and realize it's all just begun. We're so excited about our new book, I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You got to have a strategy and you got to fight. It's not about a physical fight, but you got to fight. And guess what? If you fight, you win. You'll be successful. This book is about transforming your thoughts, about what your beliefs, the decisions that you're making about speaking, what you say is so powerful, and what you do, what you're saying, the actions you take. And quitting, don't quit. Listen, success and failure quite often is just five more minutes. And finally, think about this. So many people talk about you should do this, and you should do this, and you should do this. And look what they're doing, they're not doing nothing. You can't let people tell you, you should do this. You should. As a matter of fact, they can't be putting their should on you. This is so important. Listen, we wanna bless you with your free copy of I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You can get it at vfnkb.com. That's vfnkb.com. Get your free copy today. We had talked about, and we have it for you available on vfntv.com. Uh, it's called Organizers of the Day versus Organizers of the Night. And it's about rules for radicals, Saul Alinsky. We're gonna be talking about that today. And George Soros and, um, well, definitely Hillary Clinton was mentored by uh, the, um, uh, Saul Alinsky, at a distance so was uh, President Barack Obama. And it's one of the particular rules for radicals, there's 13 rules. One of the rules that, that they use to be able to organize is if you repeat a lie long enough, people believe it. And right now, I mean, think about this, before I tell you anything, before you see this particular 2891 you're about to see, know this, that I gotta ask you a question, Steve. Mm -hmm. It's so important. If I have a huge 55 gallon drum Okay. I mean, you can actually, you can fit inside of it, okay. right? You can fit inside this drum's big, right? 55 gallons. No, 72% of that 
55 gallon drum was filled with peanut butter, right? I have a hard time getting into that. Well, we're not in it now. You're coming back out of it. You're not getting in it. Okay. <laughs> so I'm trying to say, I want to do the, so it's seven, it's 72% full of peanut butter. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of peanut butter, right? That's a lot. It's for a us, lot. It's not for Isaiah Ramos, but for us, it's, it's, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. But then you take jelly and you fill not the rest of it with jelly. Okay. Right? Right. And if you stir that up, right? Peanut butter and jelly. What's going to be more in there, peanut butter or jelly? Peanut butter. Is it going to taste like peanut butter or jelly? Probably peanut butter. Wasn't well, that evil? Shouldn't that be evil? What in the world is peanut butter being so dominant? Why is there so much peanut butter in this, in this thing? Why does it taste like peanut butter, you think? Well, because it's the majority of it. Thank you. Well, let's look at the racial makeup of America. 72% of it's peanut butter. I mean, look at this thing. You have people talking about that, you know, everything's talking about, you know, white people this and white people that. It's like 72% of America is made up of white people. White people. <laughs> That's what's happening. It's mostly peanut butter. But you have people, you literally have people, they're making people, they're repeating a lie saying to be white is to be wrong. To, that they're minim, minimizing peanut butter. It's like mm -hmm. you are what you are. I mean, whether you're, you're white or black or brown or yellow or red, I mean, they're all precious in God's sight. But in America, 72% of the drum is filled with peanut butter. It's mm -hmm. filled, it's filled, it has white folks. That's right. And we have to understand Every life is important, and when people tell you it was the it was the, what happened with our presidential candidate that got in office because of the white vote, it's like seventy-two percent of the peanut butter is white. I mean, obviously, any time a population moves and it's that big, it's almost seventy-five percent. I mean, that's actually what you're going to have. You take a look at this thing right here. I mean, you're seeing this thing, and it says specifically that America is made up, according to Wikipedia here, it's seventy-two point four percent of white it is 12.6 percent black or african-american it's 4.8 percent of asian it's 0.9 percent of american indian and alaska natives it's 0.2 percent of native hawaiians and pacifics and two to more sense of, of the other was like it looks like a lot of peanut butter to me and we have people that are feeling like i don't know I don't know why everything tastes like peanut butter. I mean, everywhere I look, there's a white person. It's because there's a lot of white people in America. Don't feel bad because you're a black American. Don't feel bad because you're a white American. Don't feel bad because you're an Asian American. We're all Americans, mm -hmm. e pluribus unum. People are literally apologizing for being the race they are. But look at it, you're 72%. And in regards to the church, you know, we're called to love all nations. We're called to, to win them all. But that includes, you need to actually love white people too. Mm -hmm. You need to love every nation and you need to begin to embrace who you are. And this division that's taking place that you're seeing happen as they're organizing darkness, they're trying to minimalize 72% of a population, 72%. And that's a lot of peanut butter in a 55 gallon drum. It's like, it's not going to happen. People, you have to begin to believe that you're not there, but you're right. there. And in the context of that, and so when you're looking, when you look at that and you see what's really going on, you're going, wait a minute, that's just a real small fragment of our society that's being funded by somebody like George Soros. As a matter of fact, there are riots in the streets and there's, there's things that's taking place right here. But read this article from Politico mm -hmm. that just came November the 15th as they're writing right here. George Soros and other rich liberals who spent tens of millions of dollars trying to elect Hillary Clinton are gathering in Washington for a three-day closed door meeting to retool the big money left to fight back against Donald Trump. The conference, which kicked off Sunday night at Washington's pricey Mandarin Ho uh, Oriental Hotel, is sponsored by the influential Dem Democracy Alliance Donor Club and will include appearances by leaders of most leading unions and liberal groups, as well as darlings of the left, such as House Democratic Leader Nancy Pelosi, Senator Elizabeth Warren, and Congressional Progressive Caucus Co-Chairman Keith Ellison, according to an agenda and other documents ob obtained by Politico. The meeting is the first major gathering of the institutional left since Trump's shocking victory over Hillary Clinton in last week's presidential election. And if the agenda is any indication, liberals plan full-on trench warfare against Trump from day one. 
Some sessions deal with gearing up for 2017 and the 2018 elections, while others focus on thwarting President-elect Trump's 100-day plan, which the agenda calls a terrifying assault on President Obama's achievements and our progressive vision for an equitable and just nation. Yet the meeting also comes as many liberals are reassessing their approach to politics and the role of the Democracy Alliance, or DA, as the club is known in democratic finance circles. The DA, its donors, and beneficiary groups over the last decade have had a major hand in shaping the in institutions of the left, including by orienting some of its key organizations around Clinton and by basing their strategy around the idea that minorities and women constituted a so-called rising American electorate that could tip elections to the Democrats. Okay, let's go back to that graphic again to see what percentage then they're saying. So that's a rising demographic. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have that particular, yes, there it is, okay. Um, so the complete total 100% of the African American vote would be 12.6% of our population, right? Mm -hmm. And then half of the white vote would be predominantly probably women, you know, I guess half, half mm -hmm. that. So you're looking, they're saying they're focusing on that particular part of the vote. What they're saying in the narrative that they're using, they're saying that, you know, it was the white uneducated, what, it's like 72%, you're gonna have educated white folks, you're gonna have uneducated mm -hmm. white folks, you're gonna have old white folks, young white folks, smart white folks, not so smart white folks. It's 72% white. So this is important, we're starting to see ourselves divided. And we're called very specifically as Christians to love all nations and not be divided and, and you're seeing the love of God a love of people in America where This narrative has been promoted and people were just going like it doesn't really matter We're all Americans, but the thing about it is we got to begin to understand there's gonna be peanut butter and everything if 72% If 72% of your bucket is filled with peanut butter There's gonna be peanut butter and everything and there's nothing wrong with peanut butter and there's nothing wrong with jelly but you have to realize if you're 72% white, white folks are going to be in everywhere. They're going to be all over the mm -hmm. place. You know? And so when you think about that, it's very, very important because when we get back from this break, we're going to talk specifically about how organizing has taken place. Organizing Saul Alinsky, Rules for Radicals, how Hillary Clinton, we have a personal letter she wrote to, to uh, Saul Alinsky, how he mentored her and the book he wrote the, that's on the back cover of this book, we'll be talking about it. it they dedicated to Barack Obama, or back then he's Barack Obama, but now he's President Barack Obama, and Hillary Clinton, the mm -hmm. Chicago Sun Times. And it, the inside of the cover is dedicated to Lucifer. We're about to meet the author of that book, and it's going to really shock you. We're so excited about our new book, I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You gotta have a strategy and you gotta fight. It's not about a physical fight, but you gotta fight. And guess what, if you fight, you win, you'll be successful. This book is about transforming your thoughts, about what your beliefs, the decisions that you're making, about speaking, what you say is so powerful, and what you do, what you're saying, your actions you take. And quitting, don't quit, listen, success and failure quite often is just five more minutes. And finally, think about this, so many people talk about you should do this and you should do this and you should do this and look what they're doing they're not doing nothing you can't let people tell you you should do this you should as a matter of fact, they can't be putting their should on you this is so important listen we want to bless you with your free copy of i will fight strategies for your success you can get it at vfnkb.com that's vfnkb.com get your free copy today I mean, that was amazing when you think about that, you know, the peanut butter analogy. Yeah, that, you know, makes got, sense. You're going to start seeing a narrative put out there, and we got to find out who are we, what are we, what do we believe, what are we supposed to do as a church, and we need to begin to organize. But first, we have to look how they're organizing. As a matter of fact, I want you to meet Saul Alinsky first. This is Saul Alinsky. He's the author of a book called Rules for Radicals, but let's hear him first. This is him talking about, as a matter of, we'll just let him talk. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, whether there are such things as answers. Take the business on the hereafter. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I've never seen the evidence one way or the other. I don't expect to see it during my lifetime. But if there is, I suppose given a choice, I think I would uh, pick hell. The reason I'd pick hell is because that's where all the have-nots are. 
you know, the currency of the realm shifts over here. It's money, over there it's virtue. But either way, if you haven't got it, you're, you're stuck. And I've spent all my life with the have-nots. And, uh, and once I got in a hell, uh, well, I'd start organizing, just like I do down here. And uh, then I'd be in heaven, personally, you know, because this is the thing that gives me the greatest happiness in life. And uh, look out, heaven, here we come. Uh, I think I'm sure there are a lot of grievances that uh, people down there have that should be worked out one way or another. Saul David Alinsky, the man who would grow up to fantasize about organizing hell itself. Literally. Organizing yeah. hell itself. So. So he writes a book when he's in jail. The book he writes, as you can see right here, is called Rules for Radicals. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay. So he writes this book. And now look on the back cover of this book. The back cover of this book, if you look a little bit closer, it's actually dedicated to Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, who were mentored by Saul Alinsky. But let's take a look at the inside cover who they dedicated the book to. Can you read this? Get mm -hmm. a little bit closer there so we can read this thing. Read this. Lest we forget at least an over-the-shoulder acknowledgement to the very first radical, from all our legends, mythology, and history, and who is to know where mythology leaves off and history begins, or which is which, the first radical known to man who rebelled against the establishment and did it so effectively that he at least won his own kingdom, Lucifer. So this is the man, I mean, he's open about what he's doing. Oh yeah. So that would be the last person you think that Hillary Rodham then, but Rodham mm -hmm. Clinton would be writing to, and be, why would she want to be mentored by Saul Alinsky? But let's go take a look at just an envelope that, that she, she mailed a letter right here. If you can see this letter right here. That's a, this is a letter that she wrote. Hillary Rodham, Rodham is her, her maiden name. Maiden name right. and, she, and look who it's addressed to. It's addressed to Mr. Saul Alinsky, right? I think that's a little bit uh, serious. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, we actually have the letter reportedly right here. Take a look at the letter right here. And we'll let Dana read this letter, Dana Lash, mm -hmm. as she's reading this letter that Hillary Clinton wrote to Saul Alinsky, who you just met, who they're organizing right now in Washington, D.C. with those kind of techniques. As a matter of fact, let's go there now and let Dana read it. From the Washington Free Beacon, July 8th, 1971. Dear Saul, when is that new book coming out? Or has it come and I somehow missed the fulfillment of Revelation? I have just had my 1,000th conversation about Revile and need some new material to throw at the people. You are being rediscovered again as the new left type politicos are finally beginning to think seriously about the hard work and mechanics of organizing. I seem to have survived law school, slightly bruised, with my belief in and zest for organizing intact. If I never thank you for those encouraging words of last spring in the midst of the Yale Cambodia madness, I do so now. I miss our biennial conversations I hope you are still well and fighting. Give my regards to Mrs. Harper. Hopefully, we can have a good argument sometime in the near future. Until then, Hillary. So, this is serious business. When people are talking about organizing against our country, the article that you just heard Steve read from Politico said they wanted to get together in Washington to, to use the money left over you know, and funding groups like MoveOn.com, according to the press that we just heard yeah. talk about it, to be able to do what? To do exactly what these rules for radicals that, you know, we taught very specifically. Organizers of the light versus organizers of the night. Organizers of the night versus organizers of the day. Organizers of the day versus organizers of the night. It's so important you have to understand it because you won't even realize, like, I mean, even if you have, if you have teenagers, you're going like, I think I'm being organized. <laughs> They're organizing us right now That's so right. they could go do something. Okay. But you have to realize that these are basic Lucifer tactics that, that Saul Alinsky understood, and he dedicated his techniques to Lucifer. But if other people are using them, they're using techniques of the flesh, you know, to be able to manip manipulate and control. And what I thought was pretty interesting, in the Wiki WikiLeaks, that reporter was reporting that they saw where the leader of the Democratic National Convention that was running Hillary Clinton's campaign is writing emails to George Soros saying, you need to fund 
these organizations, put mm. money in these organizations, and now they're talking about in this political article, they want to gather all that money up, which I would think, why would you use money given towards an election to be able to potentially come against a country? That's not good. Yeah. That's not good at all. And you're seeing people right now are being motivated. I mean, think about what is the biggest motivator in America right now besides technology? I mean, what is it? It's just money. I mean, you can get a dog to roll over for a hot dog. You know, it'll just do anything. And people that are flesh-driven, you just offer them money, and they'll just do anything. Well, you sit here, here, and, you here, sit here and say, they're paying money. They're paying money. They're paying money to uh, mm -hmm. people to go out and organize these things. And we, and very specifically, you know, Tracy Hamilton is Pat's wife, Pat Hamilton's wife, that God showed her in a prophetic dream coming out of a, of a, of a seven-day time of prayer and fasting that this organizing on and organizing off where people are hitting the streets and they're coming back, they're going on the streets and coming back, this thing's going to kick into some point where it's going to morph and all of a sudden it's not going to be, you can't take it off. And some people are just playing around with it, but people behind it, you know, is... They got an agenda and they, they know have what they're an, doing. They have an agenda and it's really, it's not even, men think they're evil, but Satan is way evil and they're being used as puppets yeah. to be able to do that. Well, I know when we get back from this break in a moment, we're going to hear another plan that they've had all along going and they George Soros mm -hmm. talked about it in uh, 2012 and they're preparing for this day. This is a billionaire that has made money off crashing nations money. Remember this is what was said specifically that um, uh, in the presidential debates and it was revealed through uh, WikiLeaks about the speeches reportedly that were given that there wanted to be a basically a western hemisphere economy where you know, Mexico and South America mm, and North America and Canada would be all one currency. Well, listen, in our next program, we're going to talk more about that because that's exactly what God told John Paul Jackson. That's exactly what George Soros is wanting, reportedly, and that's exactly what Hillary Clinton just said in the presidential debates. And we have to wake up. I mean, if you think about that. It could be a Mero or pesos, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it be the next day. And this is a plan they have going on. We're so excited about our new book, I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You gotta have a strategy and you gotta fight. It's not about a physical fight, but you gotta fight. And guess what? If you fight, you win, you'll be successful. This book is about transforming your thoughts, about what your beliefs, the decisions that you're making, about speaking, what you say is so powerful and what you do, what you're saying, your actions you take. And quitting, don't quit, listen, Success and failure quite often is just five more minutes. And finally, think about this. So many people talk about you should do this and you should do this and you should do this. And look what they're doing. They're not doing nothing. You can't let people tell you you should do this. You should. As a matter of fact, they can't be putting their should on you. This is so important. Listen, we want to bless you with your free copy of I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You can get it at VFNKB.com. That's VFNKB.com. Get your free copy today. So back in 2000, this has been going on for quite some time, and this whole thing, mm -hmm. I mean, President Barack Obama was a community organizer, um, Marshall Gantz, as a matter of fact, do we have Marshall Gantz where you can hear what Marshall Gantz has to say? Well, actually you have him. He says you have to actually, you know, polarize before you organize, and so America is so divided, polarization means divided, that that's what's happening mm -hmm. right now, and people don't understand it, but they're just totally, completely divided. As a matter of fact, listen, this is Marshall Gantz, this is the cam one of the campaign organizers for President Barack Obama's election, his first election. Let's listen to what he says about the rules for radicals and how you have to organize, polarize before you organize. But, you know, it's like Saul Alinsky said, organizers have to be well-integrated schizoids because you have to polarize to mobilize and depolarize to settle. But without polarizing, you're never going to mobilize anything. And yeah, then there's a time to negotiate. And I think we're really screwed up on that. So understand, when somebody says, we're not trying to destroy America, what they're trying to do is reshape America. But they first polarize before they can organize, then they depolarize to shift to settle. Hear him one more time. This is a, a very well-known organizer mm -hmm. that knows how this thing's done. Listen one more time. But, you know, it's like Saul Alinsky said, organizers have to be well-integrated schizoids because you have to polarize to mobilize and depolarize to settle. But without polarizing, you're never going to mobilize anything. 
And yeah, then there's a time to negotiate. And I think we're really screwed up on that. This is someone who actually was part of the first campaign for then Senator Barack Obama, who became president, who also was an organizer. And that'd be common that you would hang out. But Saul Alinsky is the theme. And that was the first time yeah. I was exposed to Saul Alinsky. So let's go take a look what happened in 2012. What uh, billionaire George Soros was talking about, the one that's funding all these Saul Alinsky, Saul Alinsky uh, organizations that are going to these radical mm -hmm. type organizations. Take a look. Billionaire investor George Soros has a new prediction for America. While it might be as dire as it gets for the financial whiz, this bet concerns more than just the value of the buck. According to Soros, there's about to be an all-out class war. Soros, who's 81, previously bet against the British pound in the early 90s and made $1 billion off of its collapse. In the years since, he's remained active in investing, but also in advocacy. He's helped keep Wikipedia afloat thanks to impressive contributions and through donations to the Tide Center has indirectly funded. Speaking to Newsweek recently, Soros neglected to acknowledge his past successes, but instead offered a word of warning. A period of evil is coming to the Western world. I'm not here to cheer you up. The situation is about as serious and difficult as I've experienced in my career, Soros tells Newsweek. We're facing an extremely difficult time comparable in many ways to the 1930s, the Great Depression. We are facing now a general retrenchment in the developing world, which threatens to put us in a decade of more stagnation or worse. The best case scenario is a deflationary environment. The worst case scenario is a collapse of the financial system. Soros goes on to compare the current state of the Western world with what the Soviet Union was facing as communism crumbled. Although he would think that history would have taught the globe a thing or two about noticing trends. Soros says that despite past events, providing a perfect example for what is to come, the end of an empire seems imminent. The collapse of the Soviet system was a pretty extraordinary event, and we are currently experiencing something similar in the developing world without fully realizing what's happening. So you're looking at this, you're looking at it very specifically mm -hmm. that they've been working on this for quite some yeah. time. For quite some time they've been working on it and people were just sleeping and the fact that maybe your candidate won or didn't win that's not the thing the thing is is that basically what we have is is a different martial there's going to be martial law martial law is coming to america a 20 trillion dollar uh debt is going to you know coming to mm -hmm. a head they just threw uh, you'll find out in the future program 16 the world bank put 16 a uh, billion dollars, I believe it is. It could be more than that. Just a phenomenal amount of money uh, into the marketplace during this time, because you saw the markets go down right before the election, all and all of a sudden money. they came right back up. But it was the World Bank dumping more money, which mm -hmm. devalues everybody's money, and they're 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 getting ready to shift things. You first, as a matter of fact, let's listen to to Marshall Gantz one more time to understand what they're saying. But you know, it's like Saul Alinsky said. Organizers have to be well-integrated schizoids because you have to polarize to mobilize and depolarize to settle. But without polarizing, you're never going to mobilize anything. And yeah, then there's a time to negotiate. And I think we're really screwed up on that. So you're looking at, and you know, this is Saul Alinsky he's talking about. Let's go take a look and listen to Saul Alinsky one more time so we understand who he's talking about. I don't know what, whether there are such things as answers. Take the business on the hereafter. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I've never seen the evidence one way or the other. I don't expect to see it during my lifetime. But if there is, I suppose given a choice, I think I would uh, pick hell. The reason I'd pick hell is because that's where all the have-nots are. You know, the currency of the realm shifts. Over here it's money, over there it's virtue. But either way, if you haven't got it, you're, you're stuck. And I've spent all my life with the have-nots and... Uh, and once I got in a hell, uh, well, I'd start organizing, just like I do down here. And uh, then I'd be in heaven, personally, you know, because this is the thing that gives me the greatest happiness in life. And uh, look out, heaven, here we come. Uh, I think I'm sure there are a lot of grievances that uh, people down there have that should be worked out one way or another. Saul David Alinsky. The man who would grow up to fantasize about organizing hell itself, mm. literally. It's, it's very interesting to understand, you know, Hillary Clinton's mentor, because what he told her reports are is that you cannot organize from within. 
she convinced Saul Alinsky that you could. As a matter of fact, we actually have her alleged term paper. She wrote her thesis when she graduated from the university on Saul Alinsky and his techniques. What she argued with Saul Alinsky was, you know, this thing works, but you have to do it from within. Mm -hmm. The inside. Understand this. He was just proved right. You can't organize from within because the people voted overwhelmingly. We don't want Saul Alinsky methods being used in our nation. So people think it's over. It's not over. Saul Alinsky never was a person that wanted to organize from within. He always wanted to get the people polarized and organized on the outside. Mm -hmm. It's just begun. Then when they asked uh, Hillary Clinton when she was running for office, they said, you know, if Donald, if, if Donald Trump becomes president, are you going to go to Canada? She says, no. She says, I love America. I'm going to stay in America, and I'm going to fight for America. Mm. And so you're looking at these things and how she, she was uh, mentored by Saul Alinsky. Uh, reportedly, by the way, she was in a church in Chicago, and her pastor introduced her to Saul Alinsky. And it, it, all, it began, you know, in, a, in a, I believe, a Methodist church, but a church. But let's look one more time. So here's this letter that's being written, the envelope. Look at the envelope so you know this is Hillary Rodham, which is Clinton now. She's writing to Saul Alinsky. So realize this thing get over. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, this is it. And I want one more time to take a look at this letter. And I want you to hear Dana one more time read her letter that she wrote to this man, Saul Alinsky. It's not over, America. It's just begun. From the Washington Free Beacon, July 8th. 1971. Dear Saul, when is that new book coming out? Or has it come and I somehow missed the fulfillment of Revelation? I have just had my 1,000th conversation about revile and need some new material to throw at the people. You are being rediscovered again as the new left type politicos are finally beginning to think seriously about the hard work and mechanics of organizing. I seem to have survived law school slightly bruised with my belief in and zest for organizing intact. If I never thank you for those encouraging words of last spring in the midst of the Yale Cambodia madness, I do so now. I miss our biennial conversations. I hope you are still well and fighting. Give my regards to Mrs. Hartfer. Hopefully we can have a good argument sometime in the near future. Until then, Hillary. This is so important. We, as the church need to organize. We need to come together in mm -hmm. unity. Everything's been divided. It's time for us to focus like VFN Kingdom Business. We talk about it all the time. You go to vfnkb.org. We got to begin to, to unify, you know, the whole vision statement mm -hmm. of that is, is unity on the necessities, uh, liberty mm -hmm. on the, on the uh, unity on the essentials, liberty on the non-essentials, and in all things love. We got to begin to not let people divide us. We've got to begin to come together. Mm -hmm. One part of that is civil Christianity. You can get there at civilchristianity.org and begin to take a pledge and say, you know what, I want to begin to gather with people. Listen, if other people are organizing to be able to take our country and, and, and oppress the, the church and First Amendment and Second Amendment, and they're using these things to do it, I mean, there it is, plain as day. And uh, it was attributed to Lucifer. I think it would be time for the church, the light, to rise up. You know, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the yes. world. But we've got to begin to come together. I want to encourage you, you know, join a VFN TV partnership. But get involved in VFN Kingdom Business. Just go to VFNTV.com, click on Partner Now, and choose to be a VFN Kingdom Business Partner. And be, understand, by us coming together, we're going to be able to focus on, they're focusing on all seven mountains, all seven of them, culture which has to do with family, education, government, business, arts and entertainment, media, and others, mm -hmm. the seven of them. And, and we have to realize, you know what? We can actually be disciples and go into those as well and be light and be positive people and influence in there. We've just found out just recently that if enough people stand up to do right, things turn. But understand this, and we're going to make this available to you on the VFN Torch. We have the alleged term paper that was written on Saul Alinsky by Hillary Clinton. And her argument was, and her paper was, he, argue, he, he fights from the outside, we're going to fight from the inside. But this is the biggest thing. 
was, was no private ownership of property based on my understanding. In other words, communism or socialism, socialism yeah. and redistributing the wealth. And we have to wake up and realize that government replaces God in people's mind when you have a socialism or a mm -hmm. communism government, which means we as Christians need to go out and love people and preach the good news in the existence of God. And you'll find out people begin to turn to God. I want to pray with you right now. Father God, we love you. We thank you for this truth. We thank you for letting us know, God, what's going on. We just ask you right now that you would intervene and bring yes. chaos and confusion into those who try to bring chaos and confusion into this nation, into the communities, Lord God, who begin to belittle members of our nation, God, and to divide us, God. Lord, you are not a divider, Father God. You unite, Lord, and we come around what you've established, Father God. And I pray that your truth would reign over Washington, D.C. Your truth would reign over every, all 50 states, God, that you would turn us back to you as a nation, one nation under God, indivisible, in liberty for all of us, God. Lord, we just call all those plans to not, and we just call, we speak to the church and say, begin to gather and organize around what God is doing in this day and time and see the wonders of the Lord. God, we ask you, Lord, end abortion, send revival, send a third great awakening, we pray. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.